Hey guys, welcome back to the business of art. Now I've gone over this subject a couple times, but I want to address how to price your art again. Uh, maybe go a little more into detail on a couple points. But uh, basically there's, there's quite a few factors and some people want the how much should I charge per square inch calculation. I have never in my lifetime used such a calculation. However, I know a lot of artists that do. And if that's what's easy for you and what you're comfortable with, then great. Go ahead and do that. I personally would not advise that, but I also use many, uh, a lot of different media and there's a lot, a lot of factors that I put into my paintings. But anywho, let's go ahead and we'll break it down. So the first thing is, of course, materials cost. So how much did it cost you to make that painting? And you have to factor every single thing into that, not just, well, the canvas was 10 bucks, so I guess it cost me 10 bucks. You know, did you use paint, your brushes, like all kinds of things that go into that, um, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing just a simple acrylic painting versus a mixed media painting, you know, you're gonna have different costs. Um, so that's definitely the first thing and that should be probably the, the easiest part is the materials cost. Next is what would be basically your time rate. Now this isn't quite the same as, um, well, if I had a job, I would make $20 an hour. Let's just say it's not quite the same as that because you have to realize that you are not an employee. You're a business owner. So as a business owner, your hourly rate, your hourly rate is different. You have overhead, you have to pay for your electricity, you have to pay for the food, you have to pay, um, you know, rent. <laughs> you have to pay all these different things that as an employee, you don't have to pay. As an employee, you show up and you work and you leave and you get your $20 an hour. So you need to absolutely factor those things in. If you're, you know, if your monthly bills are so much, and that's your monthly overhead, you need to factor that into your rate. Now for me, for Los Angeles, that makes it a very high rate. Whereas somebody in Florida or somebody in Texas or almost any other state besides maybe New York, it'll be a lot less. So you can't also like, yeah, you have to factor in your location in that. Um, but that's how you get to your hourly rate. So that may come out to be $50 an hour, $100 an hour. It's guaranteed to not be $20 an hour, no matter where you are, $20 an hour would be too low. Um, yeah, so give yourself a, an hourly rate that you feel comfortable with and actually makes sense and really is how much you should be paid per hour. Okay, and as I said, also there's location. So that's going to be the next factor is where are you and what makes sense. Living in Los Angeles, I can probably charge more for my art than living in um, you know, a, a city that's much cheaper to live in and the, the median of how much people make is less. So it's, it's definitely a factor. All right, then we have comparative uh, costs. So, there's multiple factors for that too. Whenever anybody asks me how much I price for my art, I always kind of shake my head and I'm like, how does that really help you? Have you been doing art as long as I have? Have you, you know, do you have the same level of experience as I have? I mean, my I'm, I'm an open book. You can always go look at my Etsy store and see how much I charge for my paintings. Uh, but there's, there's different factors, everybody's different. So you have to compare yourself to a people in your vicinity. So I, you wouldn't want to be in a little tiny town and comparing yourself to an artist in New York. You know what I mean? It's just going to be different pricing. And not only that, but you've got to factor in your experience versus theirs, um, your medium versus theirs, etc. So you can't just, it's not a, it's not such a simple comparison. And unfortunately, I know this may add to the confusion because there's just, there's so many factors and they are all variables. And then lastly is just what you feel comfortable with, honestly. Do you feel comfortable charging $200 for a painting 
Or do you feel comfortable charging $1,000 for a painting? Or do you feel comfortable charging $50 for a painting? There's no right or wrong. You'll get people that will say, stop underpricing yourself and you're screwing it up for the rest of us and they'll get all mad at you and whatnot. And yes, a lot of artists do underprice their art, but you have to feel good about it. You have to feel comfortable. If you're a newer artist, I don't think there's anything wrong with pricing something at $20, whereas a more experienced artist might price it at 40 or 50 or even more. I, I personally don't see anything wrong with that. And I still price mine probably lower than I should, and I'm working on building it up. And I reevaluate my uh, prices every, actually a couple times a year, generally twice a year, like in the spring and the fall, I look into my prices and I see what's, how things are doing. And I usually give myself a raise. I usually up those prices. And of course, the final, final factor is supply and demand. If you find yourself selling a bazillion paintings, you had better raise your price. If you find yourself selling nothing, it actually could be one of two things. Either your prices could be too low, so people aren't valuing your paintings, or your prices could be just too high. You haven't built a name for yourself or marketed yourself properly, so people take a look at your price and they go, oh, that's too high, and they don't buy. So unfortunately, it could be one or the other. You have to you have to take a look at that. Um, sometimes when I haven't made a sale for a while, I actually just go and I raise all my prices and then I start making sales again. So it really could be either way. I'd say probably more often than not, if you're not selling, you are likely underpriced yourself. All of this is considering your art being, of course, somewhat decent. <laughs> if you're painting things that nobody wants, well, I don't think there is such a thing because there's a market for all kinds of art. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I really hope, I know this was a lot of information, and it, but I really hope that it helps you to kind of evaluate your prices. If you want to take all of that information and put that into a square inch per, you know, a, a price per square inch of canvas, go ahead and do that. That's totally up to you. I would not recommend, however, taking someone else's square inch pricing and utilizing it to yours unless you've factored in all of those things. Where are they located? Where are you located? How much are they spending on materials? How much are you spending on materials? Uh, what is their experience? What's your experience? You know, unless you factored in all those things, it's not it's not comparable pricing and you could be way under or overpricing yourself. And as always, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.